Hi everyone, I'm Pavesh and in this video we are going to look at uh, what is TN5250 or what are AS400 terminals. So let us begin with uh, what is a terminal. So when it comes to computing, uh, if you would have uh, done a course on computer science or if you have been an avid computer user, you would have come uh, into uh, using this. So this is a Windows terminal. So this is a Windows command prompt which you can start with uh, start and start searching for CMD or command prompt. So command prompt is also a terminal. So what happens with uh, line based character terminals is that uh, you are allowed to type in commands and when you type in a command you get the output uh, which looks like this. So I've typed a command dir. So dir has, has uh, given up me the list of files or list of directories which are there in the current folder. Uh, so that is what line based terminals do that they accept commands from you you press enter the command is then sent to the server if this was connected to a server let's say if we compare it with as400 and for example if i was executing commands on a server then this command would have been sent to a, a remote server and uh, the server would have executed your request and it would have uh, given back uh, whatever data you requested uh, like this and then it would again wait for your input on the next line with a blinking cursor. So this is a normal character based uh, line terminal. So when you press enter, it goes to the next line and it waits for you and so on. So I'm sure you would have come across uh, using these terminals, line based terminals when it comes to Windows and Linux. But the terminal in the AS400 is completely different. So the AS400 terminal is actually quite uh, advanced. Uh, I mean, it has a lot of features which you would not expect from a terminal. It has drop downs. It has uh, the ability that it allows you to create uh, fancy GUIs as well. It allows you to create checkboxes. It allows you to create radio buttons. It allows you to create scrollable uh, screens so you can scroll with your mouse also these days. Uh, so uh, the functionality for mouse scrolling is also available bold or uh, underline or change of color so you can add certain text with a certain color you can add other text with a different color you can highlight a field you can underline the text you can make fields mandatory that is if you keep the fields empty it will uh, tell you or it will highlight it in the red and it will tell you that this field is not entered you must enter this field and it will show you an error over there so this is an interactive terminal which is available with uh, ibm i uh, so TN5250. Uh, so now where is this name or where does this name come from? So we can look at the Wikipedia page of TN5250 and first we are presented with this screen or the photo. So this is uh, a, a, a very old photo. So this photo is probably 50 or this photo is probably of a 50 to 60 year old uh, AS400 I would say. Uh, so what you can see is this black box. Uh, which looks like a desktop CPU is an actual AS400 of those days. So it is a very old AS400 or uh, I, I, I'm actually not sure how old this photo is. Uh, we can see if there is any date written. No, there is no date. So this is, I mean, we can assume that uh, these systems were there like uh, half a decade or half a century ago, I should say. So uh, with such an old system with the black uh, box being the desktop, uh, processor like AS400 server and uh, on the left hand side you can see a very small monitor with a keyboard in front of it. So also the interesting fact is that uh, these keyboards allowed you to input 24 function keys I think uh, I, I don't see 24 function keys here but actually we have the ability to use 24 function keys in AS400 so these older systems might have had 24 function keys as well. So if you look at the monitor, you'll see that the resolution of the monitor is very small as expected in those days, the technology of flat screens and uh, all what we have available today was not available at that point of time. So the screens were very small and the resolution which we have available today, which is in thousands of pixels or uh, millions of pixels, if you multi actually multiply the height and width. So that is not available as you can see. So these are very small screens. So the terminals which are uh, or the terminals which were available so when we talk about terminals so in those days terminals was uh, the word used for uh, your access or your endpoint or your uh, interface with the machine so that used to be a terminal or that or the word used for your interface or human interface with the machine used to be called a terminal so a computing workstation would be a terminal uh, 
it would not be a technical terminal definition as we were discussing before so the machines which uh, you were used in those days uh, and the screens which were used in those days were very small so the ibm i or the as 400 ibm i interface uh, which looks like this which we discussed in previous videos uh, which is now accessible even to this day in 2023 so if you look at this screen uh, the resolution of this screen is also uh, very small so if i go into communications and configure we'll see that the screen size is 27 into 132 and 24 into 80 option is available so only two resolutions are available and those are also very small uh, but still uh, if you look at this terminal which is available it is a very interactive terminal it allows me to choose menus it allows me to enter uh, some commands allows me to enter an option which I want and it completely repaints the entire screen for me. It It is not like a Windows terminal, the next terminal which will go down and it will wait for me to accept a new input, uh, a new line that will keep the old output as it is. But uh, this terminal, when you look at it, it, it actually acts like a graphical user interface. So it has a lot of functionalities. So for example, for mandatory fields, uh, if I uh, show, want to show an example of a mandatory field, I can execute a simple command of work vision. Here, I have not input anything. So, without any input, this field is uh, this field is highlighted in green. This can also be highlighted into red, and it can be changed uh, in the programming level itself. So, when the screen is designed, so every uh, output which you see is also called a screen. So, when a screen is designed, a specific uh, fields can be set to a specific color also the user if the user wants to change the color from green to something else you have options to do that so you have foreground color background color so you can click an option over here set up display colors and you can change the foreground color to whatever color you want uh, so usually people which work on production systems have uh, an orange color or a red color people who are working on development servers have green colors to signify that this machine or this connection is for a development server and the other connection is for a production server and so on so a lot of configurability is available uh, on such a system and uh, let us look at what options we spoke about so colors as we said can be set by the programmer so by default when you use the system at that time the colors can be set so for example when i log out so this is uh, the login screen so on login screen you can see that uh, this line is in purple color and this line is in green color here you can see a uh, so shade of blue a shade of teal color and the, the, the title if you observe this title is of yellow color so the so, so these colors are set by the programmer when the screen was developed so you have a lot of configurability you can uh, design your screens as you want uh, you can set uh, highlighted text which is nothing but making the text bold you can underline the text and you can do a lot of things and a lot of advanced options are also available to design the screens so even it being such an old system uh, with limited hardware capabilities and limited machine power the terminals which were there from that time and which are still used today uh, they are quite advanced and uh, they are very responsive as well so uh, working on such a system is I mean, it is very responsive. It does not lag. If you have even poor connection, poor network also, it will lag very minimally or it will not lag at all. So the data communication which happens, happens very fast. Uh, I mean to say uh, it happens very efficiently. That is not a lot of data needs to be sent uh, from your client's, uh, your client computer to the server or back from the server to your computer. So it is a very efficient system to work on. It it gives a lot of productivity to the person who is uh, using it once he gets used to how to use the system so some of the features which we are talking about is colors mandatory fields can be highlighted in red or any other color you can underline you can do bold you can highlight a field so drop down check boxes and radio buttons we have not uh, gone through these we have not demonstrated these but these can also be built and scrollable screens are available so for example uh, once i log in to the system i can show you so the scrollable screens are called sub files but uh, we can also look at scrollable screens for example through f1 so f1 will open the help menu for you so on whichever screen you are or whichever field you want help for uh, you can just press f1 over there and uh, this allows i mean this opens a new help screen so if you scroll you can scroll with your mouse as well on the new 
IBM iAccess client solutions, which I'm using, which is uh, IBM iAccess client solutions version 1.1.9.1. I'm not sure exactly which date it is. Yeah. So it says it is updated in 2022. So the 2022 version I'm using. So build 7th of November 2022. So this allows me to scroll these screens through my mouse scroll wheel as well. So in earlier system or in earlier clients, we had to use page up and page down. But now you can use scrollable uh, mouse uh, is also allowed so the mouse wheel which you can scroll up and down that will also allow you to scroll through code and so on so scrollable windows can be created scroll functionality is available so it creates a uh, gui kind of feeling to a terminal although this is a terminal but still you get a, a pretty uh, feature filled uh, graphical user interface kind of an environment and uh, as and because it is a terminal it uses very less uh, data for communication between you and the server, making it very fast and uh, increasing your productivity. So uh, do have a look at the Wikipedia page. It has a lot of information on uh, what is 5250. They explain that it is a block oriented terminal and it was not a character terminal and so on. So they give examples of uh, how the system looked before. I think we can see the 24 function keys here. I think uh, when you look at the function keys, 